Congressman Jamie Raskin is a Democrat from Maryland who sits on the bipartisan committee investigating uh, January 6th, and he was the lead impeachment manager for Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. He joins us now. Congressman, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for making some time for us. Uh, generally speaking, let me start with uh, the question that I think is on everyone's mind. What do you make of the allegations in Secretary Esper's book, particularly about this uh, potential plan or scheme by Trump uh, to bomb Mexico? Well, each of the lurid revelations that have caught the public imagination today reveal Trump's fascination with violence, uh, mobilizing hundreds of thousands of troops to the border, uh, lobbing Patriot missiles uh, at uh, our ally in Mexico. And then uh, of most interest to me was the idea he floated of shooting uh, peaceful, law-abiding Black Lives Matter protesters in uh, Lafayette Square in the legs. Um, and uh, so all of that is consistent with uh, Donald Trump's clear indulgence uh, and uh, apparent enthusiasm for the violence that was unleashed against Congress and the vice president and the American constitutional order on January the 6th. Uh, let me switch gears, if I can, for a moment, Congressman, and ask you about Rudy Giuliani. He was supposed to appear before your committee. Uh, he then changed his mind. And NBC News is reporting that the last-minute change, uh, according to attorney Robert Costello, came after the House committee denied a request to record the scheduled interview. Costello said he made the request in advance so there would be no allegations of covertly recording Giuliani's testimony. Is that accurate, and are you planning on holding Giuliani in contempt of Congress? So Rudy Giuliani has the exact same obligation to come and testify before the January 6th Select Committee as the hundreds of people who have come forward voluntarily and cooperated. And we don't make special deals for each uh, witness about what it is that they want. And this was a, a last-minute uh, switcheroo that uh, Giuliani uh, offered. And, um, you know, it, look, the way we view it is we have shown nothing but patience for him over the last several months as we've asked him to come in. He has an obligation to come in and to testify about what he knew. This is not a game. This is not Parcheesi. This is not risk. This is not monopoly. Uh, <laughs> this is the Congress of the United States representing the people of the United States conducting an investigation into the worst violent insurrection ever mobilized against the U.S. Congress, the vice president, and our constitutional order. And he has a responsibility to come forward and to testify. And, you know, we know that he has had problems uh, with, um, you know, people doing investigations in the past. We know that his law license has been uh, suspended by the New York state courts for lying about the election. And this is a chance for him to come clean and tell us precisely what he saw, what he knows, uh, and answer those questions. And if he has any valid legal privileges, he, of course, has the right to invoke them. But otherwise, he's got to answer the, the questions of the committee. So, so how does this, um, you know, change uh, the committee's plan as it moves forward? I mean, can the committee move forward without these important documents or materials to get an accurate picture of what Rudy Giuliani's role uh, was in all this? I mean, how does this affect the timeline, if you will, for the public hearings that are expected to start next month? Well, we have eight hearings scheduled in June, and we plan to describe every facet and dimension of the violent insurrection that shut down the counting of Electoral College votes for the first time in American history and the attempted inside political coup to destroy Joe Biden's majority in the Electoral College with fraudulent means. Um, so we're going to tell that story. Uh, we would like every piece to the jigsaw puzzle there, which is why we would like uh, Mr. Giuliani to come in and to truthfully testify. But like a jigsaw puzzle where there are a few pieces missing, you stand back, you can still see the entire picture and basically what's there. So we're going to be able to tell that. And the question is, you know, whether Mr. Giuliani is going to comply with his legal and his civic obligations here or whether he wants to go down the path of, uh, you know, Steve Bannon and uh, a handful of others in Donald Trump's entourage who somehow think they're above the law. 
Uh, can I just ask you really quickly about that ent entourage? I mean, others have not been indicted. Only Bannon has been indicted. I believe you have Mark Meadows, Dan Scavino, Peter Navarro, but only Bannon has been indicted. Are you frustrated that it's only been Steve Bannon that has been indicted? Do you want to see the others indicted as well? Well, the Peter Navarro and Dan Scavino, for example, have been uh, held in contempt by uh, the House of uh, Representatives. We have cited them. We have referred the evidence to the Department of Justice, and uh, we have every reason to believe that they are going to pursue it. It's an open, shut case. I mean, uh, neither Navarro right. nor Scavino gave us one document or spent one minute before the committee. They just blew us off the same way that Steve Bannon did. Uh, so we're, right. we're, you know, we're, we're hoping that they will move quickly on it.